Bandwidth for this podcast is brought to you by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Welcome back to Mac Break Studio. I'm here in studio with Mark Spencer, motion guru and motion trainer, and he's going to show us some really cool, amazing rigging. And you're going to be rigging a bird today, right? Well, I wanted to talk a little bit about um, other ways you could use rigging, because everything we've done so far is talking about using rigging in the context of publishing to Final Cut Pro 10. So right. in a nutshell, how would you describe rigging for the average Joe out there who doesn't, I don't know what rigging sure, is. It's, it's a little hard without really noting publishing, but in, in a nutshell, rigging is the ability to take multiple parameters and tie them all together to a single control. Got so it. that when you, when you change the single control, which can be a slider or a checkbox or a pop-up menu, it can change as many things behind the scenes as you want. Excellent. Um, in fact, many of the templates that are in Final Cut Pro are rigged so that when you change a color theme, for example, the colors of multiple uh, objects without, throughout the project change to all different kinds of colors, Excellent. but they're all within the same color theme. Okay. So that's the basic idea, you control multiple things together. But you don't necessarily need to use it just to control things for Final Cut. So I just wanted to show an example. I have here a, um, a little animation in motion, and uh, I've got this little bird, which I constructed just by drawing little shapes in motion. So you actually drew the bird using shapes and animated the bird. Yeah, now here's the kind of cool thing. Like, let's just take this, um, uh, I'll take the left wing, for example, and I'm gonna use this little button here next to left wing. This is the isolate button, and a 3D project, if you click it, it lets you view just that piece. So you you and built that in the shapes? That's cool. Yeah, so this is just a little shape. So if I drag, <laughs> you can see there's a bunch of different things going on as I drag through the timeline. Sure. Um, this, this little shape at the bottom is getting smaller. These little guys are moving. Uh, it's actually a replicator, and it's changing the angle and the angle end. So there's multiple parameters that are changing as I drag. Wow. And if I go to the tail and select that and drag through the timeline, you can see there's also a couple different things going on. The scale is changing, and they're getting closed. And then if I, if I select the body, this is kind of funny. Um, <laughs> the bird blink, blinks. There, there, there blinks as you go through the timeline here. It looks better as you actually play it. Well, you know, George, Eli, George Lucas just made all the Ewoks blink. So Okay, so there. I'm, yeah, 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 that's, you're, that's, you're I'm in good company. You're in good, you're in good company. So, so here is the cool thing, okay? Uh -huh. I'm going to select, here we have the rig in the uh -huh. layers list, right. and I'm going to select the widget. This is what um, you use to create widgets. This thing's called widgets. Right. It's called fly, and you can see right here in the uh, heads up display, if I drag, uh, we can see the action, okay, wow. of the everything happening at once. The wings flap, uh, the wings spread open, their scale and increases, and he blinks just by dragging on that slider. <laughs> All of those different parameters are being controlled by the single slider. So if I go to the inspector, I can see the details of that. So I'll select the widget. Wow, that looks pretty complicated. Well, it's these are all the things that are being controlled behind the scenes. <laughs> so when I rigged it, it's controlling all of these different parameters are all being controlled by this one simple slider, slider. right here. And these two uh, little balls on the end, this one's blue, these are the, the states or the snapshots. Right. Uh, so one is closed all the way down there. So you wanna, he's kind of downstroke, you might right. call it. And there with his wings up or fully open. Mm -hmm. So I just created, all I did is create those two states. And then when you drag the slider between them, it interpolates. It interpolates between them, okay? So that's cool enough that you can just drag between it to set them, but then you can animate it. So what I did here is you can see I've got keyframes set on it. In fact, if I choose here, show in keyframe editor, um, I really only have two keyframes. I have a just keyframe. Just repeated. It just repeated, exactly, because I have a keyframe for the first snapshot and a keyframe for the second snapshot, sure. open and closed. Right. And then I used motion's ability to tell you, look, hey, after last keyframe, I want to ping pong that animation. Has that, has that feature always been in motion? Yeah. Well, I don't know if it's in one or two. But, but it's been there in three and long four. Long time. Okay. Yeah, long time. You can choose before or after a set of keyframes how you want them Interesting. repeated. Interesting. So it just repeats the open, close, open, close, open, right. close. Over and over and again. So okay. all I did is set two keyframes, but I have ongoing animation because of that. And then the only other thing I did so that you can see him moving through space here yes. is I've added, you can see our emotion path behavior. Mm -hmm. There's the path that he's following and sure. you, can, you can adjust that to have this fly anywhere you want. Uh, and I've added a snap alignment to motion so as the bird flies along that path, it follows the path. It follows the path. And this is a fully 3D project so uh, I think we've got this play cam. I've got two different cameras in here, one I can play around with and one that's I've got kind of fixed the way I want. But here I can sort of orbit the camera and so you can see I can look at that bird from different perspectives. 
He's almost like a okay. paper cutout bird. It is. It's, and you have to kind of think of it that way because really, let me go back to the uh, regular camera here. Just play cam. I don't want that one. I want this one here. Camera. And shift Z to fit it to the window. Um, it's built with two dimensional shapes, right. right? Now, you could use graphics. You could go get graphics of feathers. You could build pretty um, complicated models and rig them in this way. They'll always be two dimensional components, but they can move around in 3D space. So like cards in space, like, playing cards yeah, in play space. Yeah, playing cards in space or anything you could, you could build with little flat objects. So you can rig and create really kind of interesting animation uh, easily and control it with a, a widget by rigging it. I think people are going to want a tutorial on how you did that. That's what I think. As a matter of fact, <laughs> where would people go learn about well, basics of motion and yeah. rigging? So if you want to learn how to rig, and you, usually rigging is, like I said, used for Final Cut Pro sure. 10. But the, the basic idea is exactly the same, and I've got a full tutorial on rigging and publishing in Motion 5 at, at Ripple Training on how to do this for, for Final Cut or for any way you want to build your own animations right inside of Motion. That sounds, that sounds great, and that, uh, that's a pretty cool bird. So rigging the bird. Thank you for watching another episode of MacBreak Studio. We'll see you next time.